Recently, the tech, the tech site Ars Technica noted that functions on Apple mobile devices allow for monitoring of personal data. Yikes! I mean, that's kind of scary. Now, Carl, I know you wrote that you wrote this on uh, Market Ticker. This is your your purview here. So, what's your take? I think this is one of the most serious things we have seen to date in the area of privacy invasion. The impact of this, especially on regulated industries, say much less ordinary consumers, cannot be overstated. Essentially, what Apple has included, and, and let's not kid ourselves here, this came directly from Cupertino. This was not something that a hacker put in the phones or in the devices. This came from the manufacturer, is a means for any device that has ever been paired against that particular Apple product to be able to access information that no one should have access to, even wirelessly, on a permanent basis, unless you wipe the unit completely clean. So the danger here isn't so much that I can break into your device just random willy-nilly. It's that if, for example, you were to plug your phone into a computer because you wanted to sync some music to it or you wanted to update it or something like this, the key that gets stored on that computer is valid permanently. And when it is used, it allows unfettered access to data that is supposed to be protected. And this access can be made without having to physically have the phone in your hand. So it's rather hard to use this over a carrier connection because of the way that carrier networks work. But over a Wi-Fi connection, it's trivially simple. Uh, to, for this to be included by Apple in the operating system is absolutely outrageous. And where I see the real risk here is in, again, regulated industries. You have iPads, for example, that are in medical contexts. You have these devices in financial industries. And these companies have hard legal requirements to protect this kind of information. For it to be made available is, is just breathtaking. So you obviously think this is intentional then, but do you think companies like Apple could be working with the U.S. government to create these kind of back doors that can be exploited in the event of, a, you know, a terrorist needs to be monitored? Maybe, but, you know, there's a, there's a basic problem here, which is that if, if I want to get access to someone's data and I have a legal way to, to do that, a subpoena, court order, whatever have you, and I seize the device, as long as the device isn't encrypted, it's very trivial for me to actually pull the data right out of the flash memory. All the manufacturers make that very easy to do. And it's, it has to be, because how else would you access the unit in order to make a repair to it, for example, or update the software? So the problem isn't there. The problem is that there really isn't a legitimate purpose for these kinds of back doors. Um, other than to make possible spying of some form. And, and uh, you know, there isn't any smoking gun that ties this to a request from the government or anything like that. But according to this article, there is evidence that these tools have been continually updated. They weren't put in the firmware during a testing cycle, you know, five or six years ago back when this was a new device and Apple was trying to make sure everything worked and da-da-da-da-da. Now, these have received regular maintenance as the versions of the operating system have been updated, so have these tools been updated, which means that they're under active development and they didn't get there by accident. They're being actively maintained and improved. But you know, Carl, aren't iOS devices encrypted by default, no? No, and that's one of the things that you have to understand about how this works, is that one of the problems with this particular sort of thing is it bypasses encryption that you would otherwise think is there. Most people think if they put a password or a passcode on their phone that that encrypts the phone. That's not true. All that does is lock the screen so that you have to put in some kind of a code in order to access it. To actually encrypt the device, you have to go a step further. But the problem with this kind of a tool is that it bypasses even that encryption because when the phone is running, it has to have access to the key in order to be able to read the data in order to make it work. So if you have a tool like this that's running in the background all the time, it has access to data that would normally be locked even if the unit was encrypted. That was Carl Denninger, author and blogger at the Market Ticker.